What's up guys, Alex from Paperform, and today we're taking a look at the recently released Gift Basket Order app, or because Christmas being on our doorstep, the Christmas Hamper Order app. We wanted to make an easy to follow form that'll allow your business to personalize so you can start getting those orders rolling in for your gift baskets or Christmas hampers. Let's take a look at the form. Now like text throughout any of our forms, it's easy to treat much like you would a Word doc. So if you click on the text you wish to edit or highlight to see the bar appear above. From here, you can change the appearance, hyperlink, as well as change the placement. Now below this, we've included a dummy logo, the complete Christmas. To remove any images throughout your form, simply click and select, and you'll see that bar again appear above. From here, you can remove by clicking the X icon, replace with one of your own by clicking the picture icon, hyperlink, and change the placement of the image. As we can see here, we've included a header image, which we've got set to that particular placement. Taking that back, we're gonna scroll down and take a look at our product fields, the particular Christmas hamper or gift baskets that our template has included as dummy products. We can see we've included three separate product fields, most popular Christmas hamper, something for her, and something for him. If you wish to change the title of any question field, simply click in this space, and you also have the ability to include a question description. Jumping into the configuration by clicking that cogwheel icon, we'll see how we can actually edit our products and stock. I'm gonna click on the product tab there, and here we can see if you wish to change the title of your product, the SKU, the price, the stock quantity, as well as the minimum and maximum quantity that a submitter is allowed to order. You can even include images within your product field. Jumping into the appearance of our product field, we can see we can change the layout for both desktop and mobile. Now we're gonna jump back out and take a look at question fields specifically. If you wish to move the placement of a field, grab those two horizontal lines to duplicate, simply click that icon there. As we saw, the configuration is that cogwheel icon, and if you wish to remove, simply click your X icon and click OK. Scrolling further down, we'll see that we've included a line here. Now this is a break. Particularly for this break, you have the option to do a new page or a section break. We've selected a new page so that we can break up the flow of this form and keep customers interested in purchasing our hampers or gift baskets. We've now also included a group of questions. Much like with your question fields, you can duplicate, remove, and change the placement of any group of questions. I've simply asked the submitter to input their name and contact details, as well as the person that will be receiving the Christmas hamper and a special note for that particular person. As we scroll further through the form, we're gonna take a look at this next section here, the delivery or pickup. It's a multiple choice, and if you wish to change any of your question fields throughout your form, simply click on the drop down menu here. Make a selection and voila. Now to enter the configuration of the multiple question or any question field throughout your form is the same as we did with that product field, clicking on that cogwheel icon. As we enter this, we can see I've included two particular options, simply delivery and pickup. The reason I've done this is because I've got section breaks after my new page break that is gonna redirect depending on the response to that delivery or pickup question. If they select delivery, what they're gonna get is this group of questions here prompting them to input their delivery address, delivery date, and any special requests for that delivery. The way I've done this is by heading into the section break and setting visibility logic to only make this section visible if they select delivery. As we scroll further down, we can see we've got a pickup section as well. I've entered the configuration again by hitting that cogwheel icon and I've selected pickup for this particular one. So this pickup date is only gonna become visible to the submitter if they answered that first question there as pickup. And with this group of questions here regarding delivery, it will only be visible if they select delivery for that particular question there. Super simple. Now let's take a look at personalizing the form to suit your business. As we scroll up here, we're gonna click on this water drop icon, which is our theme settings. Entering that, we can see we have the ability to change the look, appearance, colors, fonts, typography, as well as the UI elements of our form. You can even translate your form to suit the language you wish. From here, we can go into typography to change the font, the look, and the appearance of our text throughout our form. The UI elements will look after our background image, the way our question boxes appear, as well as our submit and pagination buttons. For agency users, the ability to input custom CSS. Translations, there. Jumping back into the editor of our form, if throughout the form you wish to input text, a question, or break of your own, simply head to the space you wish to input that, click with your cursor, 
and you'll see on the left hand side some bars appear. The icon for questions there, breaks, images, video, and for our agency users, the ability to input HTML. Now that we've looked at the basics of our gift basket app template, let's take a look at integrations. What we wanna do is create a blank Google Sheets so that we can begin populating this with our customers and better manage our orders. So I'm gonna jump into a blank sheet and I'm gonna simply label this as Christmas Hamper. I'm then gonna to need to input some column titles, for instance, name, email, and let's go with product. Now that I've done a really simple sheet, I'm gonna jump back into the designer editor. I'm gonna head up to after submission, integrations and webhooks. From here we can see the icon Google Sheets. I'm gonna click that and then I'm gonna click add row to sheet. It's super simple. From here, you'll need to add account if you don't already have one showing up as I do. And then you'll select which sheet you wish to populate. As we saw, I just created the Christmas hamper. So I'm gonna select that and then sheet one. Now, as we can see, those columns I created have appeared visible. But how can we populate this with the response of our submitter? Simple, we're gonna to go to the right hand side here and select this icon by clicking on it. This will bring up all of the fields that live within our form. So for name, send a name. For email, I'm gonna select that email field. And then for my product, as we remember, I had three separate product fields. So I'm gonna select all of those by simply clicking on them. There we go, there's those three product fields included. The next thing you wanna do is to send a test to ensure that the integration works. Now, it is imperative that you note that before you send a test, you actually run a test submission on your form. And you do that by going to the live view of your form, letting that load, and then running through until you click submit on your form. The reason we need to do this is so that the form has some real life data to pull from. Jumping back, I'm gonna click send test. And we'll see that mine comes back as a success. Now let's check the Google Sheet to see if that actually populated. As we can see there, we've got name, Alex, email, Alex, a paper form, and the product I selected, which was home for the holidays. So that integration is working. I'm gonna jump back and click finish setup. Now from here, there's one last thing that we wanna do. When someone makes an order through our form, we want to ensure that they receive a confirmation email or an automatic submission email response. So still with after submission selected, I'm gonna go emails, and then I'm gonna go click add email. Now, much like we did with our Google Sheets integration, we're gonna select that icon and then select the email question. That is once again, gonna capture the email input and send this email directly to the email address that our submitter responded to that question with. I'm gonna make the subject Christmas hamper. And then I'm gonna ensure that I include a receipt to this particular email. I'm gonna input a simple thank you message. Hi, thank you for your order. The team here at Christmas Hamper. Now, to make our email more personal, we have the ability to pipe in responses to the question fields. So I'm gonna click after hi, and then I'm gonna move over here to the answer icon. Click that, and I'm gonna select send a name. Like with our email response, what this is doing is it's capturing the customer's response to the name question field. So for instance, it's Alex. It's gonna capture that, and the email that they'll receive is, hi Alex, thank you for your order. The team here at Christmas Hamper, of course, with an attached receipt. To finish that, I'm gonna simply click add email. And that's everything done. Now that you've taken a look at how you can personalize the gift basket order app, it's time for you to have a go. Happy holidays and happy form making.